Welcome back to Dry Hollow Homestead. It's Danielle and we are just going to go through a little bit of the things we did this past week here in our homestead and at the very end of this video I'll try to give you a little update if you're interested in this pregnancy and how far along we are. We are. I am right now and um, just how things are going. So if you are here just for the homestead recipes and the canning and things, that it's the first part. And then at the very end, I will stick in a little update. So. So we dug up a couple potatoes and harvested the little bit that I had from my artichoke plant. We got the potatoes out just to see how big they were. And because we got this little french fry slicer thing at a local thrift store and we wanted to try it out so some of our potatoes still they had good size to them already and then some were a little green so maybe not quite ready um and that french fry maker was like a two out of ten it was really hard i can't really use it but it still made some <laughs> it made some french fries i guess french fry shapes bless me so we fried them up in lard and just to give it that little thing a try and I, I am about ready to go ahead and pull up all my potatoes and go ahead and can them. I'm feeling like it's about time and we salted those. We fried them in lard, salted them. This is this dinner was like 100% from the garden kind of dinner. We had a cucumber salad with cucumbers, sliced cucumbers from the garden and a thinly sliced onion from the garden and I get this uh, cream recipe from the uh, Hope's Table her creamy dressing and I made some homemade mayonnaise to use that with the classic creamy dressing I really suggest this book we use it for all kinds of things but this was my largest artichoke from my one plant <laughs> I planted several I started quite a few I think like five and then the chickens completely scratched them up uh, I take the time whenever they've already started to open like this to cut the spines off of this it's actually artichokes are related to uh, thistles so you can really see that um, as they start to open up and if you were to leave them they would have a purple flower like uh, one of the wild thistles out in the yard would if you have seen those before but we boil them until the the leaves will come off easily so there was our cucumber salad we had steaks from the freezer and homemade french fries and none of that went to waste more steak t-bone <laughs> and then uh there was our artichoke so i think i only got like i don't know what everybody got one <laughs> and it was some were little some were big we all shared i let, melted some of my homemade butter and lit added a little lemon juice this is how my husband's family would eat their artichokes i actually really like it with hollandaise sauce but i would i went ahead and just made it this way it was this is a lot faster just melted butter and lemon juice and then i wanted to show you kind of how to eat an artichoke not everybody has tried this before but you uh, pull a leaf off all those green leaves there and there's meat at the very tip at the very bottom where it is attached to the heart of the artichoke and you take your teeth and you scrape down that leaf at the bottom to get the meat off and I, I didn't really show you the heart i should have done that that's the best part but i was a little distracted with eating <laughs> the best part <laughs> and here's daisy giving you an, a, an example here so she all of my fan there's no one in my family that does not enjoy eating artichokes and they're something I will grow every year also that grows every year are our blackberries these are our th thornless blackberries, blackberries that we started a long time ago we've actually transplanted them and they have just they are very prolific they are huge berries uh, they're not the sweetest berries in the world but we enjoy uh, picking them and mixing them. I will freeze them, flash freeze them on a tray and then put them in the freezer for, for smoothies and things and cobblers later in the year. But they're really good to be mixed with other berries because they are not very sweet, like I said. So we are outside picking everything. <laughs> And we're going to take it in. Uh, also in our bowl, we have some wine berries. Wine berries don't grow in our yard. We don't have any, but we forage them up the road not far from us. 
and they are one of our favorite family favorites also I got probably a between eight to nine cups of berries in this bowl some of them the wine berries some of them are blackberries and we're gonna make my staple cobbler recipe so I'm gonna put this in the description box below and I really suggest that you in a pint jar put the dry ingredients and then um, have this on hand make four or five of those pint jars have it on hand in your cabinet so that during this season where it's busy but you get nice good fruit uh, you can make cobbler recipe uh, this cobbler recipe so it's one and a half cups of flour one and a half cups of sugar yeah I know it's it's not a health food and two teaspoons of baking powder and then a half a teaspoon of salt and then to that you're going to add a cup and a half of milk so it's not complicated at all but do that dry ingredient first and then in the pan that you are going to do your cobbler in it, this makes a 13 by 9 size you're going to melt one stick of butter I don't know what is that half a cup I'm not even sure what half, <laughs> what a stick of butter is melt that in the oven and then um, you're going to pour your batter that you just made into your melted butter from the oven and then about four cups of fruit i do this too with canned uh, peaches or canned blueberries things from the cellar so four cups for one or one quart is what i like to do depending on what type of fruit you are putting in you can sprinkle the very top with a little sugar i did that this time because these uh, these blackberries they are there's tangy <laughs> so we added a little more sugar to it yeah it's it's delicious absolutely delicious you need to keep um, cobbler uh, dry mix on hand through the summer even in the winter that way you can do this whip it up really quickly all you have to do is melt the butter add the fruit and the milk to your mixture and I put the fruit on top um, the point of a cobbler is for there to look for it to look like cobblestones on top um, with the bread that it comes up as you bake it so i do i think it was 350 i will write it in the description box to be sure 350 for like 30 minutes and this like i said i, I did two of these um this night and we didn't have any leftovers but i had just baked that bread that sourdough bread that's my sourdough bread recipe um, and my oven had to be up on 400. My oven is not working real well. Once it gets really hot, it does not come down. Um, so when I put it back down to 350, it just continued to rise in temperature from 400, not going down to 350, even though I had given it like an hour to cool off before I baked these. So they kind of got a little bit burnt on the bottom, but it they ate, <laughs> the family ate them fine and it's delicious with homemade ice cream, which I have a video on too. So another day we went to the Shenandoah Valley Produce Auction, which we are blessed enough to have really close to our home. I think it's like a mile and a half up the road. And I'm gonna actually let you listen to kind of the process of this um, auction. I think it's interesting. All these things are locally grown from farmers and they bring them here. A lot of people that own like a market, a produce market will come buy what they need um, to resell. Do not get on the pallets. <clears throat> get off the pallets. Head on down here to the west end. Five, five, four, one, twenty-eight, Google. Sixteen miles, twelve hours, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, 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 I think we bought those two. And they're no spray, so that's nice. Yeah. 
So this is what we actually came home with. This is on my kitchen table. One bushel of no spray beets. So we just got back from the produce auction. The only thing we bought this time was beets because my beets did not come up in the garden at all. I think I was using pretty old seed. So we are going to can these beets up right away. Uh, I can fit seven quarts in my canner, so we will start with seven quarts. But we need to scrub these and start boiling them. Um, in hot water for about 15 to 25 minutes to actually get the skins off. That is the first step. So I'm scrubbing this pretty good. They're actually pretty clean and they've already been trimmed off. You don't want to trim any closer to the beet or you're going to have a lot of bleeding and beet juice will stain anything it comes in contact with. So the goal of this boiling process now is just to get the skins loosened up so we can cut those off or pull them off easily. So this was just one box and it filled up my whole sink and we bought two boxes so you'll see with me how many quarts we get. I did pints last year with what we grew um, but everybody when I would open a pint they would be gone and everyone was looking for more so I think quarts are the way to go this year for beets and we paid probably about $40 in all you have to pay a little bit of a fee just to um, buy anything when you go to an auction like that so that's that is a good price for a year's worth of our beets and i did like i said i didn't grow any this time so these have already been washed up i am boiling these i think they have about eight more minutes is what is my timer showing me um, I have the lids lit on it so it boils quicker. And once those are out, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna try to reuse this water. I'll back up a little. <laughs> I'll try to reuse the water. I'm not sure if that's gonna work 100% or not. I have this huge colander. I love this thing. Uh, some of our friends used to own a Chinese food restaurant, and when they retired, they, uh, my husband helped them clean out their restaurant and a lot of the stuff that they weren't going to use in their own kitchen they um, gave to us because we're a big family so we appreciated that it was a, a great trade for some labor um, so I have this I'm going to go ahead and put this over the sink and as soon as they come off of the boil I will run cold water over them in the sink in this um, so that I can start processing get to the next point with the with those beets while I'm tr also dealing with that um, into the pot of boiling water. I might have to add some more water to it, but hopefully because that water is already hot, it won't take as long. <laughs> I don't know, that's the, that's the thought process. And we also have this many more. So these are perfect canning size. You really don't wanna go much bigger than this or they're gonna taste woody. Um, but these between two to three inches is perfect. Bigger than three inches is gonna be just a little too much, but you know, if you're growing it and you, uh, you have some that are that size, use them anyway, but <clears throat> this was perfect to buy. I'm also looking, so I'm definitely just going to can quite a bit of just beets, but I'm going to make some into pickled beets so we can have some convenience when we want to do pickled eggs and beets. Um, but this I can do in my canner or my just hot water bath canner. Uh, regular beets, I'm going to have to, without pickling them right, they're going to have to be in the pressure canner. <laughs> So I don't have enough space to be also boiling them, pressure canning them, and hot water bath canning. These, I can only fit two big pots on my stove at one time. So as soon as I am done with my very last uh, 
you know, round of boiling, I will start my water bath canner and try to get whatever's left at that point into pickled beets. That's the plan. So you will see with me how well this goes, but I, this is going to take quite a while just because I have to take the time to boil them. I don't really want to get my big cheese pot out, which is like almost double this. <clears throat> I don't really want to have to get that out. And I don't love the idea of the, the amount of work I'd have to do to make sure it was cleaned out. So I'll just keep doing what I'm doing right now. I also have seven quarts already washed with hot water, scrubbed well, and then I just have rings uh, and lids. Dad? Dad's outside. Um, also, you know, just regular life on top of that. Okay, so I put all of them in the colander. I'm going to put this hot pot back on the stove, and then I'm going to refill this very gingerly with more beets. We're gonna boil them up for about 15 to 20 minutes, just like we did the last ones. Be gentle. We definitely want to keep as much of the root and tops on as I have here because that will help it not look white, so it's such a bloody mess. Okay. Okay, I have my Excalibur dehydrator tray under here and I just put a uh, parchment paper which will make it take a little longer because it's going to keep the air from moving everything, but it'd be a lot easier I don't really want to stain my trays so I'm just going to put it out on layers like this and dehydrate it I'll let you know how long it takes so it's completely dehydrated but I think this is a simple way to use up these skins without wasting them Don't walk away from your pot <laughs> that you're boiling your potato, your beets in. They all look good. That was a long afternoon and evening, but I think we are pretty much set for for us to have beets all year long. I don't. I know we did not do that many last year. Do this many last year, and we had beets for until uh, a couple weeks ago so thankful for the hard work we put into it okay i promised you a quick update on this pregnancy <laughs> i did this the other day and then i ended up talking for 22 minutes so i don't think i should put all that information not everybody cares that much so we are at 32 weeks let me give you a belly shot real quick i always say we i don't mean we at all this is the belly like um, I have said before, we are not finding out the gender. We have a sneaking suspicion, my husband and I, we think we know what um, we're having because we had an ultrasound and uh, we've had a couple ultrasounds in our life <laughs> for babies and we're pretty sure we know what, it, what we saw. But it's still going to be fun and a surprise. The, um, the baby's totally healthy. I'm very happy. I'm very satisfied with that. I am not satisfied with my prenatal care. <laughs> that is what I ranted about for 22 minutes in, in my first video. I'm not going to get put out. Um, and it's, I've just, I've had a midwife outside the um, medical system. Like, I mean, she's part of the medical system for the last two babies. I haven't had to go into like a doctor's office and, um, have to deal with the way that feels <laughs> to be just a number um, and to see someone for three to five minutes they just take your weight they take your blood pressure measure you and do you have any questions goodbye uh, I'm not used to that I'm not used to waiting for 40 minutes before being able to talk to somebody and at days and days go by after I've called to ask a question before I get a call back to get an answer I don't like this very much and it's really up in the air where I'm gonna deliver at so um, I think I will sit down and make a video about my past pregnancies and delivery just because I love that kind of stuff and um, I maybe you would like to hear it too but I won't put it in this video so I won't bore those who aren't interested but I don't know where I'm giving birth at yet um, the practice is switching to a hospital that's further away and I like midwives I do not want an OBGYN and I only have one midwife that is coming from the practice that I'm at to that hospital 
so she cannot be there for 100% of the deliveries and I've still not even clicked with this midwife here at this practice and I don't want to go that far and I don't want to have a stranger help me get deliver my baby so um I have actually googled is it illegal to birth unassisted at home <laughs> because I'm so frustrated I uh, that's my only anxiety right now I'm not anxious about the birth I am anxious about where and who I'm delivering with that's it I I have confidence in my body I'm even more knowledgeable now than I was five years ago about how things progress and how to help myself and I am very confident in my body's ability and um, <laughs> I, I don't want to be I don't want to be put in positions when I am a little more vulnerable and be put into a corner where things happen that I don't really want so that's the only thing I'm 32 weeks and I have eight weeks before delivery supposedly but I usually go late I'm gonna keep telling myself that it's gonna be like October that way I don't feel bad whenever I'm get pretty close to October because that's happened before I've actually I know I've hurt um, my labors in the past I have complicated my labor because I was so uh, desperate <laughs> and anxious to get the baby out and be done that I rushed things and and I didn't I shouldn't have done that 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 hurt me more than helped me for sure so yes baby is totally fine I have to figure out what I'm gonna do um, I'm actually really considering having um, hiring a midwife to do uh, at a, a home birth I have never done that I would like to say that I have and I would like to do that I don't want to travel while I'm in labor I don't want to travel after labor <laughs> after delivery the idea of being home being with my family maybe not having them you know like in the room I'm not really that kind of person but I really like to be very calm and quiet and um, the idea of not knowing who is going to be helping me and not knowing where I'm gonna do it is really bothering me so <laughs> if you want to pray for that situation uh, we still like I said we're not really finding out the gender so I have lots of gender neutral grays and things maybe I'll even in that video whenever I do um, talk about my last pregnancies that and deliveries then maybe I can give you a little tour of what I have prepared for baby I'm not totally prepared for baby <laughs> But I feel like we've got a little while, so I'm not going to stress about that. I do need to uh, nail down some of the details on who's going to be helping me deliver them. So, I just want to say thank you for sticking around. God bless. And I speak Jesus over you. Bye.